Right, so hello and welcome back to another 90 Day Fiancé video on Arthur TV. Today we're going to be having a look at part two of 27 year old Brandon and his 26 year old Russian fiancé Julia. So last time out we found out that Brandon proposed to his girlfriend Julia after just five months of knowing her because it was the only way she'd be able to get a visa to come visit him in the US. Julia arrived in the US and the 90 day countdown to their marriage began but things got off to a rocky start as Brandon's mum's involvement in their private life got too much for Julia to handle. With Brandon spending all of his savings on holidays with Julia and the K1 visa, the pair are going to have to live with his parents while they save up enough money to pay for their wedding, the honeymoon and rent their own place. But while they're there, Brandon's parents are insisting that he and Julia stay in separate rooms. And even more concerning for Julia, Brandon's mum has taken it upon herself to arrange for Julia to go on birth control, even after she explicitly said that she didn't want to. Today, we're going to be having a look at Julia's arrival on the farm and all of the drama that comes with the pair living under the same roof as Brandon's parents. So with Julia having just arrived in the US, Brandon's parents thought it'd be nice for the four of them to spend the weekend in DC. But before they head back to the farm, Brandon tries one last time to convince his mum to change her mind about him and Julia sleeping in separate rooms. I just am not comfortable with it. What's her having her own room going to do? What's it gonna, is it gonna stop us from? I know, but I just wish you would respect the fact that we want you to be, at least while we're all sleeping, in a separate room. So Brandon didn't really put up much of a fight, but what did we expect? That night, he went out for dinner, just him and Julia, and told her how it went, and she wasn't too happy. You need to talk, uh, you need to explain again. If she not understand, you need to explain, 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 because if we not live together, we live. Brandon's kind of being battered around like a ping pong ball, with Julia on one end of the table and his mum on the other. With his inability to pick between his mum and Julia being a big cause of the stalemate, Julia decided to tell him where his priorities lie. I'm first your life. I'm not second. I'm stay here. I'm first. You ask me first, you tell me first, you call me first. I'm first for you. Brandon has been a mummy's boy for 27 years. He's literally only just stopped breastfeeding. I can't see him siding with Julia anytime soon, and I don't think she's gonna be able to steal him away from his mum that easily. I also can't imagine Betty's gonna let her steal him from her without putting up a fight, so something tells me this isn't gonna go down well. Well, after a long drive from DC, the four of them finally arrive at the family farm in Virginia. I feel so happy because I stay with him. <laughs> no, I'm fine. So cute. <laughs> Stop, you too. <laughs> you cry too? No. Uh -huh, I see. Am I? Yes. Okay. She is now less than 90 days away from securing half of Brandon's future inheritance and she's just rocked up to a massive plot of family land, probably worth several million dollars. Of course she's crying tears of joy, who wouldn't be? Unfortunately though, it's not going to come that easy for her. Before she had even stepped foot inside the house, it was time for an initiation into farm life. Because Julia doesn't have a job, in return for being able to live on the farm rent free, she's going to have to help out with the animals. And tomorrow you get to get the eggs and feed them, okay? Okay? You remember when I say, uh, I help you? Forget this. <laughs> I very like animals, but I don't want to kill animals. I like pet animals, walking with animals, but I'm not ready to take care of animals. It's kind of a sweet deal for Brandon's parents, isn't it? Just pay for her flight over and now they get several months of free labour on the farm. Although I'm guessing they weren't expecting her to be quite so useless. Come on, here, take it. <laughs> Julia. She's basically having orientation for a job she never applied for. But to be fair to her, she's taken it all pretty well. Now the animal introductions are over, it's time to check out the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! No! What's 
Nothing. Nothing. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. I don't um, think. <laughs> apparently, they weren't going to be as responsible as need be, so that's just your role as a parent. Oh, my God. Maybe if your kid is 16 and having his first girlfriend over, not when he's entering his 10th year of adulthood. I mean, who does she think she is? Regina George's mum from Mean Girls. Do you guys need anything? Some snacks? A condom? Let me know. Oh, God love you. I think this is a joke. I say, oh, it's so cute. Thank you, but I not live here. <laughs> this is not my room. I don't want to stay alone here. This is stupid. This is silly, crazy. I don't know how to say it. I didn't want to stay here, but thank you for sure. Well, beggars can't be choosers. To be fair, Julia doesn't have a job and her and Brandon don't have any money. They're being offered free accommodation and all she has to do in return is help out around the farm. So I guess it could be worse, couldn't it? With the first evening on the farm coming to an end, the separate room situation has still yet to be rectified. So Brandon and Julia decide to bring it up at the dinner table. I mean, I would think, I would think- That uh, you would feel weird sleeping together in his family house, his family- Without being with, married. With us being in the same house, like a run room don't away. You, don't you think it's just like, I Rita, think, we need to get don't married. Don't you feel weird I about I think this? maybe that we should keep talking about it and maybe you'll change your mind? No. Definitely didn't inherit his backbone from his father, did he? You know, Brandon's parents not wanting him and Julia to sleep in a room on the other side of the wall to them so that they don't get traumatised by noises is kind of fair enough. But talking about feeling weird about having sex before marriage is kind of hypocritical. It's not been confirmed, but there are rumours going round that Brandon's parents are actually swingers, and apparently they go on swinger events all the time, especially ones on cruises, which is absolutely wild in of itself but also raises the question, why are they so obsessed with stifling Brandon's sex life then? The source for that is someone who apparently worked in HR with Brandon's mum, and also claimed that the family are doomsday preppers. According to the source, that's actually why they live on and run a farm, because they're preparing for an apocalypse. How wild is that? I swear this always happens on 90 Day Fiancé. You meet a family who start off as relatively normal and they just get weirder and weirder as time goes on. Sometimes I feel like the producers bring on someone from the family who's relatively normal to make you realise how insane everyone else is around them. This time, that person is Brandon's grandpa and he is absolutely my favourite character on the series so far. She's a lovely young lady, but a lot of Russian women like to come to America and they promise marriage, sex, everything that goes with it to attract them. And then later they find themselves in trouble. Julia, your neck. Brandon. How did that happen? You haven't been sleeping in the same room. How is she surprised that they're sleeping together? She literally left condoms and chocolates by Brandon's bed for them. I mean, they're an engaged adult couple. They obviously weren't gonna wait months until they had their own place, were they? Literally, the only thing that's separating their room changes is that Julia's getting railed on a hay bale rather than a mattress. Julia even said at one point that they're getting frisky in the car. I can't believe you did that. Stop embarrassing your son. Will you please? I know, no, I need to. He's got, he grow up. It comes with the age. Yeah, but that's he's 27. He's 27. I'm 87 years old, but 88. I'd still do that to a young girl if I had one. Oh, my God. Come on. That, uh, anyway. Oh, my God. I love this old guy so much. What a legend. Hickeys are a little bit cringe, but what can you do? The conversation soon moved on to the wedding and Julia said that she wanted to have it on the anniversary of Brandon's first message to her, which said, you look like my future wife. But of course, Betty had something to say about that. We decided May 9th. May 9th? Really? Yeah. But that's also the weekend What's of Mother's Day. That, you know, May 9th nice. is not, just not a good day to it's do this. Not. It's Mother's Day weekend. Yeah, I know. You so. don't want to share your day with their day. Terrible day to have a wedding. Thank you. I agree. Mother's Day weekend, an entire holiday where the focus is on her as Brandon's mother, and Julie is going to steal the limelight from her and steal her son away from her with the wedding. That is literally Betty's worst nightmare. Make the right decision, you know. I think it is better for me. 
Date Nein. I love how Brandon and Julie have decided on a day and Ron and Betty are like, oh, we're still working on it, like they're involved in the decision. And as if they genuinely want them to pick another date because it falls on Mother's Day weekend this one time, when Mother's Day changes every single year. This conflict has been inevitable since the start. This is literally exactly what I said would happen last video. You've got Betty, who's a controller, and Julia, who's a strong-minded woman, and Brandon, who just doesn't want to get involved. As soon as there was any disagreement, a clash was always going to happen, and this is definitely only the start of it. Thankfully though, with tensions running high, Brandon's parents went away for the weekend, giving Brandon and Julia a much needed break, allowing them to swap hay bales for a hot tub. Mm. Yeah, yeah, come back. Where are you going? <laughs> You're so bad boy. Ah! Come on in. <laughs> Unfortunately for Betty, when she returned, she found the hot tub water was a little bit cloudy. Explain me some time because I'm not understand. No clothes in the hot tub, okay? You need to go this uh, without clothes? Without. But then... Towels to get in, to get out. I know, but why we not stay in the same room and this be without clothes? This is fine. Ha! <laughs> Good question. You know, the dynamic here is actually so odd. It's kind of like a teacher lecturing two kids. It might seem like a little bit of mixed signals. Separate rooms, but naked in the hot tub, but the residue from the dryer sheets or the soap on your clothes, it really screws up the water and the pH. And so literally I end up having to drain the hot tub and that gets really old really fast. Having to drain your hot tub frequently. It's such a first world problem, isn't it? To be fair, they definitely weren't wearing clothes when they got in that hot tub, so something else must have made that water go cloudy, which is definitely not something you want to be cleaning up if you're the mother. But why doesn't she just get Brandon to clean it up then? I have no clue the exact day or time that Brandon lost his virginity, but I do know there have been way too many times I've had to drain that hot tub. Every time I'm just like, please, Lord, let me get through this. Let me get through this. We use this for therapy. Uh -huh. uh, not for... Not entertainment. <laughs> Stop. Sorry. Stop. She doesn't need a hot tub. She needs real therapy. I mean, no mum needs to know that. Being this obsessed with your son's sex life is not healthy. After this talk, Julia was pretty mad at Brandon for just nodding his head and not really standing up for them. But later that evening, Betty and Ron sat Brandon and Julia down to talk about a few changes they wanted to see on the farm. And once again, Brandon failed to stand up to his parents. In the mornings, you don't seem to want to come out and spend any time with us anymore or help dad with the animals. Well, I don't even see you when you get up in the morning because I'm out there doing animals. Doing what, sorry? Julia. We need Brandon to give us a hand, especially in the morning. I mean, I, I mean, we would like for you to get involved as well. I already help enough for farm. I do all what you say. I clean. I never did this before. Now I try to be nice, and she say I need working more. I come here, marry your son, not live here and take care of your stuff. I get that Brandon and Julia are living there rent free and Ron and Betty would like them to help out around the farm in return, but they're genuinely treating her like an employee. I mean, she's literally just arrived in the country and they're already grilling her for her work ethic for something she never even agreed to do in the first place. And Brandon's response just makes it so much worse. I try, I really do. Wait, I'm confused. What do you mean you try? I bring tea to Julia in the morning, but then she's just like, Come, Don't say that it's my mistake. Come back. But that can't Wait happen. Don, stop. I actually can't believe he just threw her under the bus like that. If I was Julia, I would leave. That would genuinely be it for me. How spineless do you have to be to pin the blame on your girlfriend to avoid disappointing your parents at 27 years old? This isn't a man. This is a man child. Yeah, but whose fault is it? It's just you and my parents are angry at me. And I'm just like... Tell me what to do. <laughs> Somebody please tell me what to do. 
No matter what I do, somebody's gonna yell at me. This is the direct result of mumming your child this late into adulthood. He's had Betty there to look after him and tell him what to do literally every step of the way, and he's never had to be a man and make his own decisions. So when he's being told to do two different things by two different people he wants to please, he's like a deer trapped in headlights. A big spineless baby deer. Well, that is unfortunately all we have time for today, but there is still plenty more Brandon and Julia drama to come, as well as a load more 90 Day Fiancé content. So if you enjoyed today's video and you want to make sure you catch the next one, make sure you're subscribed down below so you don't miss out. As always, the links to my Instagram, Twitter and other social media will be down below, so feel free to come drop me a follow to keep up with the channel, help me decide what future videos to make, or just say hi in between uploads. I'd also just like to give a really quick shout out to my Patreon supporters for supporting me and the channel over on Patreon. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.